greetings to you and your family. We are so thrilled that you have joined us this morning as we celebrate the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to Calvary Christian Church in Pretoria East, a church that you can call home. We are a church that believes in the solid foundation of Jesus Christ, where we exalt Christ, evangelize the lost, encourage the hurting, enrich the community, and we equip the saints. Our mission, transforming the total man by restoring hope to the hopeless, training leaders, and equipping saints to the building of the church where Christ is Lord. If you are visiting us for the very first time, we welcome you and believe that the Lord will minister unto your life. Enjoy the service. Good morning, friends and family. My name is Pastor VTJ Masakona, all the way from Calvary Christian Church, Pretoria East, lead pastor. And I want to thank you this morning for joining us in service, the special service this morning. Thank you to Sister Knox for welcoming us, and we pray that the Lord would richly bless you. But I want to take this moment just to encourage you and, you know, bring you to a place of realization before we enter into service today, that this day that we are celebrating is important. It is the birth of Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is important for us to amplify and make a noise about this. And I encourage you not to allow this day to become just a shopping spree or just to become a shopping season, but make it the reason which is Christ himself as our Lord and Savior and his birth. Gather the children, gather the family together and remind them yet again that Christ is our Savior and he is our Lord. Just a few things as well before we enter into service today. Remember that today marks an online service for us and we are grateful that you could join us for that. But next week, Sunday, we start with what we call the New Dawn Sunday, which marks the first day of 2023, the first Sunday of 2023. We're inviting each and every one of you to come and join us as we celebrate Jesus. We lift his name up together and we say how great and how awesome he is. Remember, it marks the first day of 2023 and thank God it's a Sunday. Make it through come through with your family and friends. We'll be right here in the building at 12 Ferro Road in Equestria Shopping Center, right next to the Curves Gym. You'll find us right there. Let us worship the Lord together on the first day of 2023. I don't want to waste your time. Let's go directly into service. Let's enjoy today's service. Worship with us. Praise the Lord with us. Gather friends and family and remember to share the service with a friend. Send it to somebody and say, my church is on. Let's gather together and praise the Lord together. God God bless you and Father, see you in the name of next Jesus year. Christ of Nazareth, we come before you this morning. We exalt you. You are high and lifted up, and you are worthy of all glory and honor. And we have come before you this morning to give you glory and to magnify you. We understand, O oh God, that today marks the day that you came into this world. And Father God of Israel, we want to make it special. As we are sitting around with our families, my Father and my God, we pray that you come and you dwell with us. We pray, O oh Father, that you are the center of today. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we worship you, O oh God. We exalt you and we lift your name high. You are worthy of glory and honor. You are worthy to be exalted. Even as you decided that being God, you will live your throne in heaven. And you would come to this world. And you, in your coming, they would be death so that we could leave. We thank you for the cross. We thank you that you came to save us and to set us free. Hallelujah, we bless you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Somebody bless the Lord, hallelujah. As you're seated in your living room with your family and with your friends, would like to welcome you to Calvary Christian Church, Victoria East, a place that you can call home. Come on now, join us 
as we praise and as we worship the Lord even today, even on this Christmas day which commemorates the birth of Christ in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this very morning, hallelujah. On a Christmas day like this, we are all thing to praise and worship our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Check. Mangi hamba eskotin so kufa Hallelujah No mangi hamba mangi hamba eskotin di di Hallelujah Oh no mangi hamba mangi hamba eskotin so kufa Hallelujah no mangi hamba, mangi hamba, esko di di di. Hallelujah. Sampini, uisitamu sami, ugu peme, ugu peme. Sampini, uisitamu sami, ugu peme. Jesus, dala lami, kona la paka na mina e. Magi kashe, shalo gwe na. Oh, Jesus, dala lami, kona la paka na mina e. Magi kashe, shalo gwe na. Jesus, dala lami, kona la paka na mina e. Magi kashe, shalo gwe na. Come on. Ah, get on your couches. Come on, let's just get on your couches this morning. Come on, Jen. Nasimini, oh, is it Tangusami? Oh, is it Tangusami? Oh, 
Come on, everybody, give him glory. He is worthy. He is worthy. We exalt you, O oh God. thank you that Lord we are not alone we stand strong we stand mighty we stand guarded we stand oh God father led for you oh God father no longer are just the Holy Spirit that descends but you also dwell in us oh father and we thank you that Lord even in this morning mighty Savior it is the coming of Christ that allowed the Holy Spirit to be ushered even into our lives it is this, even his resurrection his departure to sit at the right hand of the Father that allowed us, oh Father, to have access to an advocate, to a constant and a committed leader and guide, which is the Holy Spirit. And we thank you this morning that, Lord, you're going to minister to our hearts. And, Lord, let the same Holy Spirit, He, the person who is the Holy Spirit, minister into our hearts, change us, transform us, and impact us, and translate the reality of your word in our lives. And we pray that, Father, even in the comfort of our homes, even in the comfort of our cars, even in our workspaces, mighty God, minister to us through the omnipresent power of the Holy Spirit, through, oh God, for the, the leading and the direction of the Holy Spirit, even over and upon our lives. And Father, we pray even in this morning that Lord God Almighty, ancient of days, as we take this moment to celebrate the birth that transacted and changed the entire trajectory of our lives. Lord, we lift up the name of Jesus Christ even in this morning. And we thank you that, Lord, as your word goes out, you will minister to us. You will minister to our lives. You will change us and transform us in a great and impactful way, O oh Father. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we lift you up and we thank you, Father, that you are present. You are ever-present. Help in times of trouble. You are the one that, O oh God, Father, advocates even for our lives in the seasons that we cannot even advocate for ourselves we give glory honor and praise and adoration unto you for you are lord and you are king and there is none that is above you there is none that is greater than you and we thank you this morning that lord you will minister to our hearts you will speak to us you will transform us and you will change us to the glory and to the honor of your name O father in the name of jesus christ we thank you and we bless your name and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, amen and amen. Wherever you are, may you take the moment to give God a hand of praise and thank him for his goodness. For the God that we serve is a great God. There is none that is like him. And this morning, I believe that as we stand on this significant, pivotal morning of our lives where we realize how good God has been, how great God has been in our lives by giving us Christ our Savior and our Lord. May you stand there. May you take the moment just to remember the sacrifice and the beauty of who Christ is when he came into our lives to change the entire journey and trajectory of our lives. I would that we go directly into the word this morning and I believe that God is going to speak to us. He's going to change us and transform us. Towards the end of the service, we'll get through announcements and we'll do everything else that we need to do. I want you to get your Bibles ready, get your notebook, your notepad heads ready that we be we be able to receive God's word this morning together hallelujah may the reading of his word be a blessing into our lives and may we be transformed and changed the book of Luke chapter number two and we're going to read verse number eight to verse number ten this morning 
Luke chapter number 2, verse number 8 to verse number 10. And we're going to read together this morning. Open your Bibles, open up your pad, open up your phone. And let's read together this morning as we celebrate Christ and who he is in our lives. The Bible reads as follows, verse number 8 to verse number 9 of Luke chapter number 2. The Bible says, now there were some, rather they were in the same country, shepherds leaving out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night and behold an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid verse number 10 then the angel said to them do not be afraid for behold I bring to you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people good tidings of great joy which will be to all people matthew chapter number two verse number one to verse number two and also verse number 11 matthew chapter number two verse number one to verse number two and also verse number 11 i want you to read with me together this morning as we just bring back the reality of how christ came into being in our lives. The Bible reads as follows, verse number one and verse number two. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, the wise man from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. I want to read verse number two, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Verse number 11, I want us to read all together wherever you are at home in the phone in the tablet whatever you're reading from even on the screen i want you to follow me verse number 11 at the count of three one two three let's read and the bible says and when they had come into the house they saw the young child with mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented gifts to him gold frankincense and me father bless us speak to us this morning in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen as we celebrate the reality of who christ is and the importance of who christ is i want to share with you this morning on this christmas sunday morning under the subject find the king find the king i love it when we are in the building together to say chat to your neighbor and say to them find the king i know you're going to be chatting to your friend right there or your next door neighbor and say find the king it is important for us to realize that anytime there is an instruction to find something it means this particular thing is not obvious it means this particular thing is not slap bang in the face and everybody will understand that this is it. But now, when you find something, it could also mean that that particular thing has been lost over time. It could also mean that you once had it and you lost it and now you need to find it. But interestingly so, when we say find the king, you realize that the word there is a definitive article or is definite in nature in other words it does not say find a king it says find the king in other words we can find other types but they're not the king we can find other things but they're not the king in other words if you were to bring it home you would then begin to understand that there are kings but none like this king there are kings but none like this one in, in, in actual sense many of us can find ourselves in a position of being around a king without the king of being around a king without the only king and it is important for us to pick that note up on the subject find the king 
The text we have read is a very familiar and famous text. In fact, we had two texts, but both of them speak of the same story. They speak of the same matter. And one is recorded by Luke, one is recorded by Matthew. But they speak of the same matter. But there are distinct differences that I want us to see. In verse number 9 and verse number 10, we're going to verse number 8 to verse number 10 of Luke chapter number chapter number 1. If my tablet can just play with me, there we go. If, if we read on Luke chapter number 2, the Bible then says, verse number 8, the Bible says that at that same time, at that same time in that same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watching over their flock by night. Now, listen, the event that took place, Luke shows us that this was a thing that happened at night. It was not a thing that happened during the day. It happened at night. And interestingly so, then the Bible says, these guys were shepherds. Now, I put it to you that God did not make a mistake by revealing unto a king that another king is coming. He did not make the mistake of telling another king that a king is coming. He told shepherds. This brings to us a premonition or a pre-understanding of the fact that he appeared to shepherds because he was not only bringing a king or the king, he was bringing the shepherd of the church. I want you to hear me this morning very well and very clear. When Jesus came, he did not just come as a child but he also came as the shepherd the Bible says for Jesus is the head of the church so God was appearing to the kind of people my God that will understand the kind of person that is coming he is the great shepherd for the Lord is my shepherd David writes I shall not want I will fear no evil for thou art with me what he was under, he was making us understand is that the Lord is not just Lord but he's also shepherd and that is why Jesus appeared rather the angel appeared to the to the shepherds they were keeping watch over their flock the next thing he was showing us how preeminating to us was the fact that this shepherd cares about his flock so he was showing us the kind of shepherds he appears to is the kind of shepherd he will be. That is why Jesus himself is the one that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you because the kind of shepherd we have is a shepherd who cares about his flock. That is why when he speaks to his disciples, he says there was a man with a hundred sheep and he lost one and he left the 99. He followed one because this kind of shepherd cares about the flock. And the Bible says that he appeared to the kind of shepherds that were caring for their flock. Now, notice they were caring for their flock in the night. It was not during the day. In other words, this shepherd will stick by you even when things are tough. This shepherd will stick by you even when things are ugly. Even when things are not a blessing in your life. This shepherd does not leave you because it's night. But he sticks with you even in the night. He appeared to them in the night. They were watching over their sheep. And the Bible says, and behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. Oh my God. The glory of the Lord shone around them. In other words, he was saying, when I come, I will change your circumstances. What was dark will now become light. Why? Because when I come, I don't come empty handed. Jesus, the Bible calls him the light of the world. Why the light of the world? Because the night can come into our lives. But we need Jesus to appear. And watch the Bible says that when he, when he appeared, he says, he said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring to you good tidings, good news. I bring to you good tidings of great joy which will be to all the people. Now, the difference between Matthew and Luke in the record of the scripture is the following. Is that Matthew directly goes to the matters of Jesus being born. He does not show us what happened in the process of his birth. Luke, however, shows us that the angel had to have a meeting with the wise men.
before they departed. Now here we go. This is the gist of what I want us to carry. The angel had to have a meeting with the wise men. The history will tell us that they were astrologers. They understood the concepts of the stars. They understood that when certain stars appear, it means that there's something which is changing in the atmosphere. And guess what happened? The Bible says when the angel appeared, he informed them and he announced to them the coming of the king. He says to them, Matthew gives us this matter. He says to them that as soon as, in fact, Luke is the one that tells us. He says to them, I bring you good tidings. But he says to them, there is a child who has been born who is king of the Jews. Matthew brings us to understand the type of child that was born in the words that this wise man say. Verse number two of Matthew chapter number two, the Bible says, saying, where is he who is born or who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Where is he who has been born king of the Jews. The history of kings is such that kings would be ordained or would be anointed or would be placed. Even in Jewish history or Hebrew history, you'd realize David had to be anointed king. You'd realize that, uh, that jo Josiah had to be anointed king. You'd realize that Hezekiah had to be anointed king. They had to be anointed king. But this type of a king did not need an anointing. He did not need oil over his head because he is actually the oil himself. The Bible says where is he who has been born king? He was not made king. I'm here to say our worship does not make him king. Our praise does not make him king. What makes him king is inherent inside of him. He comes from the father, the ruler of the heavens, the earth and under the earth. He is king. He comes from the father, the one who heals every disease. He is king. Even a above diseases. He is king. Even above poverty. He is king. Even above weakness. He is king. Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Here we go. Watch this. The Bible then says, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? And the Lord says the following. It is important for me and you to understand hearing is not enough. Because Luke shows us that they were told by the angel the good tidings. Hearing is not enough. In other words, they could have been told and kept on with their shepherding. They could have been told and decided to stay in their land. But when they were told, they rose up from their land and they went, and they went on an expedition to find the king. They went on an expedition to find this king. You have been in church 24 five years but the Lord is waiting for you to rise up and find the king. You have been coming and serving left right and center but hearing is not enough. Get up on your laurels and find the king. There is a king that wants to be found by you and they stood up from their chairs. If they were sitting on chairs they left everything that they were doing and they went to find the king. And listen the, the sad part about the the church today is that the king doesn't even need to be found. No, no, no. He's ever present. Unlike when he was born, he was in one place at one time. But right now, he's not in one place at one time. He is everywhere at, at the same time. He is everywhere. He can be in your house and right here in the church at the same time because this king is available to be found. This king is available to be found. And watch when they said, where is he who has been born king? He was not an adult. He had not grown to 33 years. No, he was still a baby. Just few minutes or few days old. He was still a baby. But his position, his position was guaranteed. His position was guaranteed. And guess what? Because he is a king. The Bible says in the book of Revelations, you have been made kings and priests. Why? Because of your position is guaranteed. I don't care what you are facing, but tell whatever is facing you that, that you are facing a king. You are facing a king. Why? Because my Savior is a king. He is a king. And it is important for me and you to pick up the following. 
and understand that they said, where is he who has been born king? His age is not our issue. But his position is our issue. His age is not what concerns us. No, 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 no. We are more concerned about the fact that even when he's just a few minutes old, he is king. Even when he's just in diapers and they need to change him, he's still king. Even when he still needs to be fed milk like a baby, he's still king. The Lord that you serve was not made king by the world. No, 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 no. The God that you serve was not made king by power. He was a king fully even before he even performed the miracle. who I don't even know if that word exists, but I think it does. King fool. He was full of kingship in his life, even before he was performing any miracles. And here we go. As we're about to wrap it up, watch. The Bible says that where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. Ooh. We have seen his star. Can I put it to you? Back in the days when we're still shepherding the flock, I pretend like I did, but let, let me talk like I did. When we're still shepherding the flock, we would be given the, the responsibility to shepherd the sheep and the goats. And guess what? We would go to fertile land so that they might feed on that land. They would be herding in that land. Not heading, herding. You have to describe it well, herding don't waste school fees please watch this the bible says they would be herding in fact not the bible myself we would be herding in the land and this sheep would be herding now you've got to understand because the soil was fertile you would find more than one shepherd in the same piece of land <laughs> you would find more than one shepherd in the same piece of land hear me hear me, and hear me well I put it to you that when the wise men were shepherding the flock, they were not the only ones in that place. They were not the only shepherds in that place, but they were the only ones who saw the star. They were the only ones who recognized something has changed. I know you might be the only one in your family, but as long as you recognize that there is the king of kings, I know you might be the only one in your office division. Everyone else is believing in other things. As long as you see the star, don't stay where you are. Start moving and find the king. Start moving and find the king. The Bible says that the following it says, For we have seen, ha, we have seen his star in the east. If they say we have seen his star in the east, it means there are others who did not see the star. Huh? There are others who did not see the star. The absence of Jesus in people's lives is not the absence of Jesus in reality. It is the absence of recognition of Jesus, of his star, of his presence. That brings an issue. And watch the Bible says, as we finish it off, he says, we have seen his star in the east. Welcome to Cover Christian Church, Pretoria East, 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 Ne. East, East, catch it right there. If you don't get it, forget about it. Watch, it says, For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. We have come ah, yeah, yeah, to worship him. We left others at home, but we have come. <laughs> we left other people in our families that don't believe, but we have come. I don't know who is not coming with you, but as long as you come, that's the most important thing. When we appear before the king, we come to worship him. For we have come. For we have come. In this season, a song will be sung. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. He is Christ, the Lord. Now, you've got to understand, not everybody will come. But he's saying, I have come. I have come. I have recognized the position he holds. I have recognized the power he has. He's still a baby, but I have come. He's not done anything in my life as yet, but I have come. He has not opened the Red Sea for me, or he has not opened the Jordan for me, but I have come. He's not healed the lame as yet, but I have come. He says, I have come. And we have come. 
to worship Him. In the last verse we read, and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now listen. It is only this time that we are shown the nature of the king. And you're going to hear me well. We are shown the nature of the king. The Bible says that when they came into the house, they found the child with Mary, his mother. When they came into the house, they found the child. <laughs> uh -uh. Listen, they did not find their blessings. They did not find their anointing. They did not find what they have been praying for. They found the child. Uh, they found the child. Now, the child, his stature and his form was not depriving him of his position. Ah. He, the fact that he was a child did not mean recognition should not be given. The fact that he was a child did not mean that he was no longer a king. He was the king even as a child. And what is it that God is showing us? He's showing us that they found the king and despite the nature of the king, they worshipped still. Because kingship is not about whether he does for you the things you want or not. It is about the fact that he is in his position. He is in his poor position. And as we close it, I want to share a story quickly. And I think I've shared this story before, but let me believe that it's the first time. If it's not the first time, just tell your neighbor he said it before and listen again. Here we go. A king. In a, I, I forgot the name of the movie. I'm not sure if... I, I forgot the name of the movie. I think it's London Has Fallen. It's not a king. It was the president. I think it's London Has Fallen or one of the movies that talks about the destruction of the White House or something like that. But what then happened is that the the White House in its magnificence or in its beauty, in its greatness, in its offices and all the security and all that, it was bombed up. And when it was bombed up, they took the king into hiding. And this one bodyguard was, was, was moving with the king. Uh, rather with the president, not the king. With the president, right? Now, listen to me very well. When he was moving with the president... Everywhere where he was moving and he had the president with him, he would be granted access easily. Not because of who he was, but because he had someone with him. It had nothing to do with his bodyguardfulness. I'm forming words this morning, a lot of them. Bodyguardfulness is a long word. It's there in the dictionary. Now listen, it had nothing to do with his fighting skills. It had everything to do with the fact that he was with the president. There are certain places that even in the spiritual realm, unless you have the king inside of you, you will never have access to. When you find the king, you find keys to certain doors. Up. When you find the king, you find entrances up into closed doors. Up. What am I saying this morning? You might be listening to me, and this is the, this is only because up. it's Christmas Day, up, and you felt let me go to church on Christmas Day. But I'm inviting you to a place up, where the king is no longer an issue of conversation, but is an issue of relation. Up, where the king up, is no longer an issue of what you have heard about him, but the fact that he dwells inside of you and Jesus is calling us to a place where we move with the king where it's no longer just about Sunday morning 
where it's no longer just about praise and worship, where it's no longer about how you sing or how you play or how you dance or how you do, but the King is moving with you. You have the King inside of you. And this morning, I want you to encourage yourself and to even encourage your neighbor, encourage your colleague, encourage your friend. Find the King. He's available to be found. And all he desires is somebody to find him and worship him. Is somebody to find him and lift him up and say, you are the Lord who gains. Jesus might seem like he's not appearing a lot in your life. Like you don't see him doing miracles, signs and wonders in your life. But I'm here to say that does not strip him of his kingship. He is still king and Lord over our lives. He's still king and Lord over our lives. And I want to invite somebody this morning. I know you only came to church because it's Christmas. I know you only appeared today just because you were busy browsing and surfing, just trying to find what can I do on Christmas day, on a Sunday morning. I'm inviting you to have a relationship with the King. To become an heir of the kingdom of the King. To become an heir that is able to experience the blessings and the abundance of who God is. And this morning if you are there and you have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the King is inviting you to His kingdom. The King is inviting you to, to, to be part of what He is doing. To be part of where He is going. To be part of what He has called us into, which is the kingdom of God. The King is inviting you. And I want to lead you this morning just to receive the blessing of having a relationship with the King. Find the King. He is available. Find the King. He is there for you. And if you are there, I want you to take your right and put it on your heart. And I want you to pray with me this morning as we invite you and we welcome you to a relationship with the King. I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you this Sunday morning believing that you are the son of the living God. You are the Christ, the king of kings. And you have died for my sins that I may be saved, that I may be delivered from the clutches of sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now that Lord, you bless me, you receive my heart, you wash me, you cleanse me by the power of your blood. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive him right now as Lord and King of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. And Father, we want to thank you this morning that, Lord, you have given us an opportunity, Lord, to come and discover and experience and encounter the King, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That, Father, he ministers continually without relent into our hearts and into our spirits. The Lord, we are led by this King. In decisions we have to make, we are led by this King. In directions we ought to undertake, we are led by this King. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give honor, glory, and praise and adoration unto you. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Find the King. Don't make it an issue or a question of whether he's there or not. He is there. We know he is there. All you have to do is to find him. Allow him into your heart. Allow him to lead and to direct your heart. And when they found the king, verse number 12 of that same book of Matthew says, then they were divinely warned yet again. When you find the king, you'll be able to get direction in your life and be able to get leading of what God wants you to do. Find the king in your life. We want to invite you this morning just to partner with us as we're going to offer this morning, give an offering. 
unto the Lord. We believe in our church that giving is a result of conviction. It's not a result of convincing none whatsoever. We will not force you. We will not push you. But after hearing the word, after hearing God, whatever the Lord has led you in your heart to give this morning, we want you to partner with us and give and give honor to the Lord through your gifts. The Bible says when they found the king, they opened their treasures. They opened what they had and they began to give to him. May you open your treasures this morning and join us together as we give to the Lord. You'll see our banking details pop up, but before we give, I want to pray over whatever you're going to give and pray even for you that the Lord blesses you, that the Lord carries you and the Lord walks with you even in this moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to pray that Lord, even in this time as we give, may this be honor and worship unto your praise. May this be glory and honor unto you. And we pray that, Father, may it be a blessing in the life of somebody, O oh God. Let it be a result, O oh God, Father, that comes back into our lives that we have obeyed your word and we have given what you have called us to give. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ, we give glory, honor, and praise and adoration unto you. For you are faithful and you are Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you and we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We want to thank you this morning for joining us in service this morning. As we continue to give, we want to thank you for being part of service with us. And may the Lord richly bless you. May he keep you. May he walk with you. May he continue to remain king over your life. And we want to say to you, as we wrap up our Christmas service today, Merry Christmas. Enjoy it with the family. Have time to eat, to sit, to laugh. And most importantly, remember that a king was born. Rather, the king was born on this day. And we stand in celebration of who he is. May you celebrate it responsibly. Enjoy it. We shall meet next week, Sunday, exactly right here in the building. We're back physically in the building exactly at 9.45 for what we call the New Dawn Sunday. New Dawn Sunday, which marks the first Sunday of 2023. Be with us in the building. Be with us online. We are back here and we believe that the Lord will bless us. May you enter 2023 in a blessed way, in a great year. And literally, I will see you next year guaranteed it's next year we will see each other god bless you and have a lovely week Enjoy. we believe that you've been blessed by the service this morning and if you have given your life to christ or in need of prayer there is a whatsapp comms line that is displayed on the screen drop us a whatsapp and someone will be ready on the other side of the line to pray with you if you have a testimony to share with us we would love to celebrate what god has done in your life drop us a WhatsApp, share it on any of our social media platforms so that we can celebrate the goodness of the Lord in your life. Otherwise, our programs are still continuing. Look out for them. We are also having Monday prayer every Monday on Team Link at half past six and in person. See you on Sunday.